In this video, I'm going to continue talking about using layers in Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. So here's my Ski Godzilla illustration. And if I open up the layers panel, you can see I've got a bunch of different layers. So as soon as the artwork was coming together in foreground, midground, and background, I started organizing everything onto layers so it would just be easier to work with. So I'm going to zoom in here. And let's look at what we have. So on the background layer, I have just one rectangle. It has a free form gradient for the sky. And it's so important to be able to lock the background like I have here with this lock enabled. So you can work on a layer above without disturbing the background. I'll close this layer. Next, I have the mountain and the trees. You can see if I blink these off and on. And if we look here in this layer, you can see there's a ton of objects here. This is really typical for working in Illustrator. And that's another reason it's good to organize your artwork into different layers because you can imagine how long this list would be if every object in this artwork was just on one layer. Now, in addition to organizing into layers, you can also organize into groups. That's a really great way of working in Illustrator. So let me zoom in here a little bit. We can see the skier that's taking pictures of Godzilla. And this is on the mountain and trees layer. So as you can see, I've got these little paths right here. And when I click on one, you can see it highlighted over on the artboard. There's another one. Those are the branches of this middle tree right here. And then here's the trunk. And then looks like that is the triangle that makes up the tree. So one way to group this is to just select these three branches here, and it helps to use this touch shortcut here, just the first part of the touch shortcut. It's just like holding shift down on the desktop. So if I click there, and then I can continuously add objects to my selection. And then go over here to the artboard and the common actions, and this is the group icon, just click on that. And now I've created a group out of these, which enables me to edit all of them at once, resize them using those bounding box handles, and rotate using this handle here. And back over in my Layers panel, I can see this group here. If I turn down the triangle, now I can see all three of those paths that were formerly just individually sitting on this layer. Now they're contained within this group. Now, what if I want to make these two into a group? So I can select the same way that I did using the touch shortcut here and just select both of those. But another way to do this is just to go straight out to the artboard. And because I have this background locked, then I won't worry about disturbing it. So I can just select both of these here, tap on the group icon, and now I have a tree made up of its individual components, but I can edit it all together. And over here in the Layers panel, I can see that new group. And if I turn down the triangle, this is a nested group. So this is a group that has a group inside of it. So I have the group and then the triangle, the green triangle of the tree. If I turn down here, I can see each individual path. So we've looked at two ways of creating groups, by using the Layers panel to select objects and the touch shortcut. And then we've also looked at just selecting objects out on the artboard. I'm going to collapse these groups. And by the way, if you want to ungroup, just click that same icon on the common actions bar. And let's talk a little bit more about selecting and editing. So as we saw, you can go inside of a group here, go all the way in, find the path that you want. Let me just deselect by clicking on this empty space here. Here's the path that I want the tree trunk. So I can select it here in the Layers panel, even though it's contained within this group, and I can still edit this path individually. So I can go over here and maybe make it a little thicker, tree trunk, that sort of thing. So the Layers panel makes it really easy to select things and edit them. Another way to go about this is just to select it on the artboard. So if I select it like this just by tapping once with my selection tool, then I have the whole group. And then if I double click, it might take me a couple chances to get that. There we go. 
Then when I double click, I'm already inside of the group within the group. So I have the branches in the trunk group here. And then if I double click again, I have that little one branch there so I can edit it apart from the others. Maybe make it a little bit thicker, or a little bit thinner. And I'm still inside this group so I can select the tree shape and edit it apart from the rest of the group. Maybe stretch it out, make it a little bigger. So it's really a matter of tapping once to get the group selected and then double tapping to successively work your way down into the group. So it's kind of like isolation mode in Illustrator on the desktop. Now, if I double tap here on this branch and now I have its group, double tap again and double tap again. Now I'm inside of that branch, but let me try this one more time. If I double tap on that, now I'm in direct selection. So that's this tool here. And this is the tool that allows me to work with the curve handles and the anchor point. So I can now make this sort of a curvy and it looks like I might have drawn a little bit extra there. But there, I've edited that and then I'll click done. And now I have a curved branch. So organizing your artwork into layers is really helpful in Illustrator, not only because it allows you to lock and hide and work a little bit more easily with complex artwork, but it also allows you to select things easily just by tapping on them inside of the layers panel. Well, I hope you've enjoyed part two of my tutorial on working with layers in Illustrator on the iPad. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm Laura Coyle and I teach Adobe Illustrator on the iPad and desktop. I've been a freelance illustrator for over 25 years using Adobe Illustrator and you can find out more at lauracoilecreative.com. Thanks for watching.